for now. Okay. We're going to record. Um, welcome, everybody. Some of you I have seen twice in one day, which is absolutely thrilling to me. Um, this is an official special session of the um, Advocates for Collaborative Education. And much like our whole group, um, this was really born out of a conversation that started on Twitter yep. um, around SEER. Um, and for those of you um, who are not familiar with Dr. Pennell, he is a statistician and a breast cancer researcher. And I, again, I will, I will reiterate that this particular session is not about breast cancer. Um, this is about the SEER program and the SEER database. Um, we tried to figure out ways to make it sound sexy. Um, if you're like me, you think data is sexy all by itself, but if you don't, well, then I'm not sure how we can help you. Um, but I'm going to hand it over um, to Alan to kind of introduce himself a little bit, um, to do a SEER overview, and then he's agreed to take questions um, from this group and, and stay on, you know, until so we feel like we've um, we've got a better understanding of, of, of what there is. So thank you, Stacy. Uh, th this is what happens when you hang out on Twitter. Um, Good stuff. Yes, yes. Well, glad. I mean, honored to be here. Thank you. Um, I, I we we'll talk about SEER, the data that I have, just because of my interest is is going to be in breast cancer when we look at a little data, um, but we can talk generically about the database. Um, I'm a uh, longtime statistician um, in, in the business world, uh, most of my career. Um, and about 10 years ago, started teaching at the, my university, University of Tennessee, uh, mainly MBA students. And at the age of uh, 50, I decided to go back and get my doctorate. Um, I, for some reason, I still don't know why, but glad I did. Um, so I finished that about five years ago. So I'm a, I'm a postdoc, um, regardless of the gray hair. Um, and then about a year or two before I finished my dissertation, um, I lost my wife to uh, metastatic breast cancer. And, um, you know, the short version of that story is lost interest in uh, my dissertation topic on a new statistical model for predicting uh, mortgage defaults. Um, and uh, threw it all away and, and did my dissertation on uh, metastatic breast cancer. Um, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I call myself a metastatic breast cancer researcher. I, I think that's probably fair. I, I wrote a dissertation. I do other research. I uh, presented at conferences, uh, things like that. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how to get paid to do it. I, I do it all on my own time and my own dime, but, uh, but that's okay. Um, anyway, we, several of us crossed paths talking about SEER, and um, uh, I happened, I, I don't do, um, I, I don't consider myself a SEER expert. I consider myself SEER knowledgeable. Um, I, I do have the, the breast cancer, SEER breast cancer database, uh, you know, on my laptop. I occasionally um, uh, will do an analysis, answer a question on Twitter, um, I use it uh, for a couple of uh, research projects that I did where I needed uh, data for simulation on like tumor size and things like that. Um, and then like many in the metastatic world and certainly the metastatic breast cancer, um, we all want SEER to um, start counting recurrent metastatic breast cancer patients. and. If we can get over that hurdle, you know, any and all metas recurrent metastatic cancer uh, patients. Um, and so I, I'm working, I've, <clears throat> I wish I could tell you the state of Tennessee is going to be the first state to count recurrent metastatic breast cancer patients, but uh, I'm, I've been close for about a year and a half. Um, uh, I got them to agree to put it in their five-year plan that they would study it. I got them to agree to put me in charge of studying it. We studied it and we recommended that they do it. And now we're just trying to, you know, get the bureaucracy to move. So we'll see. <clears throat> Sorry, I told them earlier, I, I'm losing my voice this week. I have no re no earthly reason why. I, I don't know if the, uh, the smoke. Making smoke. It, we send I, it to I, you. 
<laughs> I, that's my only guess, but I would feel like a whiner given those of you that are out there in the midst of it. So anyway, um, I will share screen. And um, uh, I, I would like you guys to interrupt me at any time. You don't, do not have to close, um, keep, you know, keep your questions to the end. I only got maybe 20 minutes ish um, sort of a presentation. Uh, I've got a few pre-made analyses to just to kind of show you the database. But more important, if, if a question pops up, uh, just grab the microphone and say, hey, Alan, and, and stop me. And, and that'll be fine. And if you ask questions at the end, that'll be fine, uh, too. Um, one of my former students, Pashadi, I haven't noticed she was going to join us. Pashadi, are you here? Did you make it? I can't tell. Didn't see her. But anyway, um, she's helped a lot with organizing the, the database for me. Um, and then uh, when I got this invite, I asked her if she'd help with the presentation. And we got together and it was basically 90% done. So she deserves a lot of credit. Um, all right, here we go. So SEER, <clears throat> uh, the particular set of data I have, the citations there, um, they update it every few years and um, it's always years behind. Um, so the, looks like this data is released in 2018. It has data through uh, 2015. Now uh, that's just kind of how cancer data goes. It's slow, slow to get. Um, and, and I'm going to show you a few analyses just for the fun of it, or maybe if you have a question, I might be able to whip it out on the spot. Who knows? Um, but this database is complicated. And, and so if, if I say a number and you want to quote what Alan said, I don't mind you quoting me. Um, but you should put some sort of disclaimer, you know, and an, a, a you know non-peer-reviewed or non-validated analysis, because um, there's there's so many tricky parts that um, I, I I want someone to check some of my numbers, but the only people I have access to are students, and they don't know enough about it. By the time I tell them what to do, they really haven't validated my numbers. They've just done what I said, so I don't consider that uh, validation. So, so I have confidence in my numbers, but. Um, they've not been reviewed by anybody. Um, so there's that. So SEER is our United States of America um, government cancer database uh, located in the National Cancer Institute, which is located in the NIH. Um, and get my pen. So here's one thing I see people talk about on Twitter some and at conferences. Um, it covers about 34% of the population. So one question that people have is, well, well why not all of it um, since it only covers 34%? Is, is that bad? Does that skew the data? And, and the statistical answer is no, that's fine. Um, uh, the, the word statistics is the basic meaning of statistics is to take a sample and infer to a population. So that's kind of what we're all about. Um, the scientists, statisticians at, 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 at NCI are smart enough to know that 34% that they cover uh, is that, how random is that of the population? Is it under underestimating uh, certain age groups or demographics, um, those kind of things. So they can adjust for that. So um, I don't worry at all that it's a sample um, and you can make an argument the samples are better than populations. Um, cancer data is extremely difficult to quality control. There's so many nuances and, and um, you know, ways to break things down that I'd, pr I'd rather have one third of the data with high quality control than, than maybe all the data with less effort on quality control. Can I ask a question about go that? Please, yeah, please go ahead. So, and I and I'm hearing what you're saying about you know the the percentage of the data as long as it's quality is is probably more trustable than quantity that that might not be nearly as accurate, but it's my understanding that every state in the country is required by law to collect 
cancer data. There's a cancer that, registry for every state. That's my understanding as well. What is the, what's the why for why some of these states either choose not to participate in the SEER program or weren't asked or do, do you have any understanding? I, of that? I, I do not have an exact answer to that. So I'm going to give you my opinion. So on, on that. Um, so I, I don't know how it all, I, I, I'm guessing, here'd be my guess, um, when, when it was started, not, maybe not all states had a registry or not all states had a registry with uh, high quality. I've heard our own people who know our own Tennessee registry um, are very high on its level of quality now, but they'll make a comment like, well, God, it was horrible X years ago when so-and-so was in charge or something. And, and, and so, I imagine that's how it got started. Um, they all um, adhere to certain standards, but I don't know if, if you said Tennessee, because Tennessee's not in SEER, send us your data, it's gonna raise another level of quality control, I believe, mm -hmm. and, um, and then also work. So um, yeah, I'm kind of with you. There is a, I'm going to forget the acronym, um, working a little bit with Metaviver, they've got access to this database, um, N-A-A-C-C, it'll come to me. Uh, and I think they may collect all the state registries. Um, and of course, then, then you've got to, you know, variables have to match and things like that. So that's okay. that's my opinion, but... I have not researched that question, Stacey, before. Okay, thanks. Okay, yeah. Um, let's see here. So th there are the, the states and localities. I assume there's some history to, to why those, but I, I don't know that, that history. Again, as a statistician, I, I, it doesn't bother me that it's a sample. I'm, I'm quite fine with that. Um, the, the main objective of SEER is, is to count. Um, to count and document the cancer burden in the United States of America. Um, we all know the saying, you know, what, get, what gets counted gets done. Um, so anytime you read um, statistics, you know, number of breast cancer cases or deaths or uh, prevalence of lung cancer or things like that, um, uh, there are other databases, uh, but most likely it's going to come from SEER. And it's to help judge the burden to help prioritize uh, resources to help measure um, progress. Now we, we statisticians call this kind of data descriptive statistics. Um, and ultimately we, we want um, predictive or prescriptive. We, we want to solve problems. And so the, the SEER database um, occasionally is used to sort of with a little problem solving in mind, but for the most part, it describes a problem. Uh, it, it's not that great uh, at helping solve the problem. All right. And I think I pretty much said that, um, that it gets updated, standards get changed, um, and, and, and there are different versions. Uh, evidently, my version is the the, the whole thing, SEER 975 through current data um, for, for breast cancer. Um, and it's updated and it's usually three, four years behind. And these are uh, data sets that are downloadable? That's like um, you say. Yeah, um, you have to request them, but in the ultimate end, it, it, it's a one page request. And if you request it, you're, you're gonna get it for the most part. Um, I, I had one of my students fill out the form and say, I'm requesting this so Dr. Panel can, you know, do, run a simulation or, you know, whatever. And, and um, it, it, you know, comes in a, I think it was a comma separated file. You got to do a fair amount of work to sort of get it operational. Um, but yeah. And, you know, that first citation, I'll go this real quick. That they ask that, you know, anything done with it, that that citation is, is provided um, mm. with it. So, Alan, do you mind just stopping on that map again? Not, not at all.
What what are you pondering? Um, I hey, think I'm st I think I'm still trying to wrap my brain around the fact that that not all states half of the United States. <laughs> yeah. Valencia, thank you. Valencia half of the United my States. They, like I just can't wrap my brain around this. Yeah. Yeah, so, well, and I, I yeah, I what I'm noticing is that all the states have a registry, but yes. they aren't included in the tier. Um, this is Kelly. So part of the background, part of the background on why SEER chose the places that they did. If you look at this map, um, you've got the greater Bay Area, the LA area, um, Georgia, that have um, higher uh, Black American populations. You have Iowa, Kentucky, Utah, and Idaho, which I think we're supposed to represent more rural populations. You have Greater California, New York, Connecticut, Mass, that were representing more urban populations. So the original thought was that this was relative. This was supposed to be representative of the U.S. population and the demographics of the U.S. population at the time this registry was created. And at the time it was created, I read something a while ago. And at the time it was created, it was pretty representative and it was fewer places than this. I think it started off with seven and then more places were added. But if you look at the demographics of these regions now, this is not representative of the US as a whole. And I think a lot of the, when SEER was first started, things were not computerized as well. I mean, I can tell you right now as a former practicing physician that the way information used to be distribute used to be collected by a state registry was based on pathology reports. And if I did a pap smear on a patient that came back abnormal, um, suggestive of cancer, and then I went on and did biopsies, the pap results were entered into the registry. I eventually, and, event, and by eventually, sometimes it was almost a year later, I would get something from the California registry going, you know, we see that Jane Doe had an abnormal pap smear and um, what's the disposition? And I would, you know, then say she had a biopsy that showed this and, you know, they would ask for follow up up to the, you know, to the time that they sent the stuff. But it was months and months and months later. And I don't know now whether things are more automated. You know, when I stopped practicing five years ago now, um, it was still getting a form in the mail to hand write, fill out, and mail back. And that's, you know, California, which you would think with Silicon Valley would be one of the more technologically advanced states. Yeah, I, I, I thank, thanks, Kelly. I, the couple of comments. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how to characterize the degree of technology. My, my, my guess is, is it's going to always be behind what we think technology is because we're talking about state governments and balanced budgets and, and, and fighting over where, you know, money gets spent. Um, uh, that's going to probably be a, a part of it. And then I, I, I just have to give my same statistician. I mean, it's fine to, to, um, I mean, I don't, I don't own SEER. I, I'm not defending SEER. I, I don't, it doesn't matter to me. Um, but from a statistical standpoint, so any imbalances that may appear, the, the statisticians there should be defining those, measuring those, and then they can quote correct for those um, when they make population type of of statements. I, I, I don't know if that's publicly available. It probably is. I haven't looked for it. Um, but so if, if I do an analysis with the current SEER data, I'm, I'm not adjusting for any, say, imbalance in race or age or, you know, any, anything like that. In, anybody else? I, I understand. I, that's why I commented on it. I know that it's a, a, a common uh, concern slash frustration. Um, and, uh, and, and I'm, I'm with you in the sense that in this electronic age, if everybody has a database, you know, why can't we just send it to one place? And, and, uh, 
I don't know. I, I would imagine maybe we'll get there someday when standards, um, you know, get more common and quality control is, is believed to be good, et cetera. You so know, what, if, if everybody recognizes there is a problem here, are they working to adjust what states it's coming from or are they happy as is? I have no data on that, so I, I can't, uh, I can't answer that. Uh, I, again, I would just say there's two ways to handle that. You could change, alter where you get your data to sort of reset the balance that was uh, that, that Kelly described, um, and, and you can measure the imbalance and, and adjust. So, I mean, if if you if there were no Hispanics, say, in this data period, then you can't really adjust for that. But if Hispanics are underrepresented by 10%, then you can make a statistical adjustment uh, for that. You got to know it, right? Um, and they, they use the census data to, to do that. And, uh, you, know, you know, can I say- I have to tell you, I'm just going to say that I, I, I would find it very interesting to go back and look at the original map, because I know there's more states involved, because Kelly just educated me. But I'm also wondering, um, if we put an environmental um, map on top of this, um, so, you know, so where, are the hot, where are the hot spots? So I'm from Buffalo, New York, um, Niagara Falls. Um, where I grew up was where the Manhattan Project is. Um, Roswell Park Cancer Institute is the first cancer hospital in the United States. It's located in Buffalo. And the, you know, the undertone here is, is that that cancer hospital was located here because there's so much cancer here. Heavy industrial town, da da da. So it'd be interesting to see that overlay of, you know, where were those nuclear projects and... Um, uh, Kath Kathleen, I just, I wanna, I wanna jump in here too. I, I would love for um, Alan to, to go through his presentation a little bit. One of the reasons we're having this conversation is because I think we all, through our own advocacy lens, realize that fear is probably not as adequate as, as we would like it to be. So the thought process was, let's get baselined with what it is, what it isn't. And then for those of us who have the energy and the interest, let's then talk about who do we need to talk to? How is this built? How, how do we influence it? And what do we think is missing? Um, because I think there's a real opportunity there. And I think us coming at it from our different uh, cancer communities might actually be able to, to make something happen. Stacy, this is um, Diane real quick, just to mention that Lynn Penberthy at NCI is the person, Dr. Lynn Penberthy, I believe is the SEER person at NCI. And they seem very aware of their gaps in recurrence data for absolutely sure because they keep funding grants to fill that in and I've included a link in the chat section but I think that they are very aware of the gaps and they are doing what they can but I just wanted to provide that name for you if you wanted to talk more or anything or me I could do some additional research to see if she's moved on and given those responsibilities to someone else, but that's who was working on it the last I talked to someone about SEER. Yeah. But, and I think the point you make and that link that, that you gave, that, that's both the solution and the problem, right? The, we're, we're trying to data mine to get data that we could just ask for. <laughs> and and uh, so anyway, and that, that, that's a wonderful project that, I, would, I wanted to make one comment. That this is, that you, that you listed. All right, want, I'm going to move us ahead a little bit. Great. I mean, sure, go right ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, uh, a couple of weeks ago when Chasman Bosman uh, passed away, I did a lot of, for the first time, looking at the Sears data. And the thing about the Sears data that is a good point is that it has more information, actual, like real information about African Americans and native Alaskan people versus you're not going to get that information from trials and you don't really want people using trial information when you have populations that uh, don't really 
participate in clinical trials. So I, I, there was something I read and I don't have access to it right now that talked about that part of the way that they are figuring this out was to try to get as much information about um, different uh, ethnic uh, minorities in the United States. Yes, so. okay, great, great discussion. Um, so, uh, I mean, really that's kind of the overview. I wanna show you a little bit of sort of the behind the scenes uh, parts of things. So here's some things that, that I'm studying with the database. I'm, I won't read those to you, but um, you know, so one of the things, for instance, if you say, what's the data on stage? Well, historically, SEER has used the early stage, uh, regional and distant. Um, where we might all think stage one, two, three, and four. Um, so we created a new variable um, and tried to take all the old data and get it into the way I think um, personally in the stage, you know, one, two, three, four. Um, so those are some oddities and, and of course staging changes over time. So they have to create, you know, a new variable which references an old variable um, and, and that can get sort of confusing. Um, just a few things on the, the cancer uh, database. Um, we've got on the upper right in, in the database, six and uh, 0.65% 6, 6, male. Um, I've always in my head heard the number like 1% male. Um, so that, that's not inconsistent with that, a little, little lower. Um, I, I don't know, I don't have any reason to think their sample would be biased one way or another on gender, if certainly possible. possible. Um, there's the, the, the break on the bottom right, the breakdown uh, by stage. Another question people have a lot is DCIS or, or stage zero or stage zero in any, any cancer. Um, from what I've read, what I've seen and what I understand, um, stage zero is, has never been um, in any of the incident numbers that, that we might see, incidents per 100,000, things like that. And when we hear 250,000 breast cancer uh, diagnoses a year, um, that's stage one through de novo for. Um, and so there, there's some discussion sometimes does screening, uh, which does cause us to find, I mean, ever since screening started, we find more and more and more stage zeros. Does that skew the numbers? And best I've seen, best I understand, it does not. Um, you do have to be careful when you do some analysis, do I include stage zero or not? Um, and I'll, I'll show you an example of that um, uh, in, in a minute. We did see, uh, I'll, um, it's not a bad place to pause for or one second. I did see on Twitter this week a new study that came from using the SEER database on DCIS and um, ultimate metastasis from that. Um, and so you can see where, whoops. Um, they, they've said they've used the SEER database. And this is the kind of thing that researchers will do with SEER. So they're identifying an issue uh, or a problem or however you want to think about it. The, the bottom line of this study, which is consistent with what my brain already thought I knew, was that 3% um, of, and they say women, I don't know if they excluded men or not, um, 3% of women diagnosed with DCIS ultimately metastasize um, uh, for uh, how we treat that and the current uh, clinical trials going on that are comparing uh, surveillance of DCIS to, uh, to, to action. So that's a, an example of a re very recent uh, study someone deciding to use SEER to uh, do the analysis. And so um, you have what's called a data dictionary, the PDF. 
And that's kind of part of the table of contents. Um, you can see the variable names. It's got race, sex, birth date uh, by year. You can't put month. Uh, that kind of makes it identify too identifiable. Um, and then you see all these weird codes. I don't, I don't even know what EOD, I could look it up, but um, you know, tumor size, mark tumor markers. Here you can see some of the AJCC codes for staging um, that, that either are new or old. Um, and so when, when you have this dictionary, you can go to a particular page and it'll tell you a little bit about how the data is formatted um, and uh, uh, so there's year of diagnosis and um, and primary site. So here's another question that I want to talk just a little bit about that comes up in the metastatic world. Um, if I have metastatic breast cancer to my lung in my lungs, do I show up and see her as breast cancer or lung cancer? Um, and the answer is you come up, you show up as breast cancer with METs to the lung. Um, now, can I guarantee nobody's ever made a mistake or, you know, of course not, uh, but the general method by which it's done. Um, and so uh, there's also, th this one's interesting, a sequence number. So uh, you could, one could be in the SEER database more than once, um, about 90% of it is you're in once and then some people are in two or three times. The second and past the second time is supposed to be an additional primary tumor. It is, uh, here's malignant primary. Um, so that's where we get into, I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2010. Um, I was discovered to be metastatic in 2015 to the bones. Do, does that information go in? And the answer is no, it, it does not. Um, although I'm going to show you in a minute, I, I may have found that can where you, it got in by accident. Yeah. Can you clarify that for me? My understanding has always been um, if there is a change in stage within four months, then that, is, that change is reflected within SEER. If it is not reflected within four months, then it was a primary. And then if you were, let's just say like you suggested five years later, you met out that that is, that is a whole new instance of you and it looks like, is no. that wrong? Um, so the four months is, and I, I hear three months, sometimes four months other, but we'll go with the, the four months. That's just the definition of, of um, de novo uh, metastatic cancer. So if, if we diagnose you with cancer and, and we're planning, you know, we're dealing with insurance, we're planning your treatment, you're getting a second opinion and, and all of that takes, you know, two or th two months or something. And then we discover you're metastatic. We're going to call you metastatic. And so that's just a, that's just a, one of those thousands of definitions they have to come up with. So it's not really an issue of, we're going to change SEER, every, you know, in a four-month window. Uh, we're going to, that's just the definition of what gets into SEER to begin with. I don't think they would actually change it. But listening to you. One, this is Diane again. Also, yeah. in talking with the people at Fred Hutch who work with SEER and they have their own cancer surveillance system database, which folds into SEER, they have told me things like, we don't have a definition of recurrence that is satisfactory yet for SEER, that they can't even decide on what recurrence means. This is what you're talking about, the, the words and what they mean, yes. and what they mean to the people in SEER and what they mean to people like us. They're not necessarily the same. So they have to come up with SEER embraced definition of what recurrence means for us i mean i think metastatic recurrence obviously but they're also thinking local you know ipsilateral occurrence in the other right. breast or um maybe move on to the axillary region something like that so they haven't yeah. even agreed upon they haven't even agreed upon the definition of what recurrence is that's one uh, of the stumbling blocks to get this information 
It is. Well, I'm glad you brought that up. Pretty much, I, I think I would be over the hurdle and the state of Tennessee would be ready to implement, except for that question. That, that question came back to me from the state. How do we define recurrence? Now, I've done do some research for them, and I still am. Um, Germany counts recurrences for the last 20 years. I'm trying to get a hold of their definition. The United Kingdom um, has said that they now count recurrence. And I found some of the documentation that was in Parliament where they had to define it. So, so people have defined it. And, and, and yes, it, it does have to be defined. Now, Stacy, back to your question. Um, what goes in the SEER database is only supposed to be a primary tumor, a primary um, uh, um, diagnosis. Okay, so if I'm diagnosed with breast cancer and then five years later, I, I get a local recurrence, I get breast cancer again in the same breast or the other breast or whatever, then I potentially would then be in the um, SEER database twice. But if I'm five years later, I, I have got metastasis to the bones, that never ever is supposed to or enters the SEER database. And that's the thing we all complain about. That's the thing we want. Um, now here's what they do do, pardon the pun. They do track each person until death. Okay, so you're gonna see in a minute that somebody is in the SEER database as stage one, and it says they died of breast cancer. Well, how do you do that, right? We, we, in the United States of America, as far as I know, you cannot die of stage one breast cancer in the breast. Well, it means sometime in between, they became metastatic, but we do not note the date we do not note that that happened. Um, we do not note where, we do not note anything. So this is a black hole. And so you'll see um, the, the famous question, what percent of early stage breast cancer patients metastasize? I, I have a estimate answer for that. Um, and it's based on the pure assumption that if somebody's stage one and dies of, of breast cancer, they had to metastasize. So, all right. So, do they get that information then through like the death certificate? Is that how yeah, it works? Yeah. Yes, Th they because are experts at um, at following up on that information. And that is just like in lung cancer, for instance. I can't tell you how many people have died from lung cancer have received their loved one's death certificate, and it has said cause of death tobacco related, and they'll mark yes just because that person has lung cancer and died of lung cancer. So I can only imagine the, the, how skewed that data is on you know, lung cancer deaths. Yeah, I, so um, that, that's a common, <sighs> yeah, that's a common complaint, concern. Um, I don't have any particular expertise in that. Um, right. I'll comment as someone who has, you know, uh, has my wife's death certificate in my backpack. Um, and again, as a statistician, I'm going to say, yeah, there's going to be errors, but I'm probably pretty confident that, that overall that you can detect trends and incidence rates and, and kind of make general, you know, this cancer happens this percent of the time versus that. So I still feel uh, you know, we want it to be as high quality as possible, but but I don't, in my mind, I, it doesn't concern me that it would be invalidated. It just may not be as precise as we would like it to be and that it could be. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, that is, that does happen. I mean, we we hear the stories, uh, you know, about COVID and how, how that impacts death certificates and so forth. All right, so I'm gonna move us ahead a little further. Great questions, having fun. So uh, then you've got all these codes that doctors have to use and, and 
Um, so, you know, here's a bunch of codes for breast cancer. You kind of think breast cancer is, I got it, I don't. Um, and, and, and so th these are the kind of issues, all these definitions that, that make it hard to do this. Um, and then I think there's lung, um, okay. So um, all of those are there. And then, so here's what I was talking about on metastatic. Um, in it, so the codes identifies metastatic involvement at time of diagnosis, okay? So again, if I have breast cancer and METs to the bone, they have a place to, to put that, to note that um, this person is de novo stage four. They have breast cancer at the time or within four months that we diagnose them with breast cancer, we also diagnose them with metastatic disease and they, they can code where it is. I don't think there's much else. They, I, I looked, I wanted it. I, actually, I need the data, if anybody knows how to get it, on the size of metastatic tumors. They have the size of the primary tumor. Um, and so again, mistakes could happen, but if you show up with met, met, metastatic disease in your lung, they're not going to typically, they're not gonna call it lung cancer. They're gonna call it breast cancer with metastatic disease to the lung. Again, knowing they could make mistakes, but as a general principle, uh, I would say they get it right. Okay. Um, I wanna show you just a couple of things real quick and then you keep asking all these great questions. Um, the um, oh, wrong file, that's my, I, when I teach uh, stats, I, I teach kids how to uh, price a diamond so they do it well, but anyway. Um, here, here's my SEER database. So it's got eight, 828,457 rows. Not, uh, not all of those are distinct people because some people are in more than twice. And that, that's for the history of from 75 to 2015. It's got uh, about 130 something variables. Some of them I've made new ones. So, but you can see, you know, month of diagnosis, uh, age, race. Um, we've got various, you know, staging, lymph node involvement, um, and more staging. There's a ton of staging. It gets confusing on this. That's why I made my own staging variable. I kept tired of getting patient ID, which which they only know, you know, who that was. Um, primary site. I only have breast cancer. The whole database would have have all cancers. Um, reason for no surgery. I don't know what that is. I don't use it. Um, survival time in months, uh, year of birth, year of diagnosis. So you kind of see all the variables. So, you know, a simple thing I could do is say, um, let, let's look at uh, age at diagnosis. Um, get a quick little histogram. You'll notice, so here's some things you have to do. There's a 999 year old person in the data set. Uh, what that usually means is that's the code for we don't know or something. So I got to go in here and snip it out. Whoops, hold on. And rerun it real quick. And now it's gone. So the median age, 61 years. Um, those tall, weird spikes, I haven't investigated, but my guess is um, they're probably uh, right at, uh, let's see, yeah, right at a decade where there could be rounding up or down. Um, that wouldn't happen naturally. Um, you can see 50% the, uh, of the people are, of, of, of breast cancer patients are between 50 and 72 years old. Um, 10% younger than 43. It sure seems like that is, uh, in one of my 
breast cancer groups here in Knoxville, the, the average age is probably, you know, 40. Um, and they always ask, are we getting younger? Um, and, and the data tends not to support that. I think younger people are more active. We, 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 um, we you know, and, and we tend to meet them more often and it, it seems that way. Um, but I, I could, for instance, segment the data by before the year 2000 and after the year 2000, what, what's the median age? I think I've done that, but, um, and, and I, I didn't see a difference. Um, so I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna do a few more little simple things and you feel free to ask a question. Um, another question is like month. Um, I tend to believe we're diagnosed breast cancer in the month of October more often because of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And October is the highest month, but, but not, not, I mean, I wouldn't call that statistically significant or anything. They're all in and about the eight, you know, eight, eight ish percent, but it is but a is little. That, is that data, that data is from 1973? Is that from the beginning? That's from the beginning. So, so yes, if you I, were to peel out anything before the whole pink ribbon la la started. What, what, what year do you want me to peel out? I think her first race was 1990. So if you peeled, yeah, if you just went 90 and above. Oops, I went the wrong way, hold on. My peeling skills live aren't all that good. <laughs> so there's approximately 91. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, pretty much, I, it didn't change much. Well, yeah, so you know, um, I could go let's go a little further. Kind of see. It's funny though, because I think the other reality is, if screening goes up in October, does not necessarily mean people get a diagnosis in that month. True, that's so. that's true. So anyway, um, you know, sometimes data proves our hypotheses and sometimes sometimes it doesn't. Um, I don't know, this one probably be boring to you, but one, one that I used for a, a sim, simulation, I, I was looking at the concept of dormancy, of, of uh, metastatic cells going dormant and coming back many years later. And to do that, I needed to know something about the size of tumors. Um, you can see that weird histogram because there's numbers like 999, that'd be a 99 centimeter tumor, um, which I don't think we believe. So I'll get rid of some of those. And so the, the median tumor size is uh, one and a half centimeters. Um, with one centimeter to two and a half being half the tumors. That mm -hmm. sounds, that sounds, you know, reasonable to experience. Um, so those are, all of these things are, again, what we statisticians call descriptive statistics. They're describing what's going on. They're not going to help us a whole lot fix, you know, uh, what is going on. Um, so here's the famous question. What percent of early stage, and this is breast cancer, breast cancer patients um, metastasize? All right. So my effort at that, couple of things you gotta notice. I defined early stage at one, two, and three. I did not include zero, because that has historically not been in, included. Um, I didn't include people that we didn't know it was not their first tumor. That's a very confusing variable. Um, so their if their first diagnosis was breast cancer and they were stage one, two, or three, um, and I cut it off at approximately the year 2000. So this is everybody diagnosed before 2000, 28%, um, 29% rounded of those early stagers have died of metastatic breast cancer. Yep. That's, that's almost 30%. Yes, and, and, and that's, 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 the, 
that's the figure cool. that's out there. That's the percentage yeah. that's out there ballpark. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's died, so that doesn't count those that have recurred and are metastatic and are still alive. So it's got to be bigger than that, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so I think that the 30% number is a very reasonable number. Now, 30 years from today, maybe it, it's not going to be that as bad as it is now, right? Because we, we got different well, things happening, but, but we won't know that stats. 30 those stats are 20 years old, Alan. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So 30 years on is another 10 years. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, Alan, does it let you look into um, of those deaths by sub cancer subtype? Um, I can do that. Uh, I don't know if I can do it live on the oh. internet, but I'll try in a minute. <laughs> Uh, While you have that screen up, could you yes. do it for after the year 2000? Uh, yeah. Do you want me to include everything or go from 2000 forward? From 2000 forward. Okay. So yeah, the problem, that, I'll do that. The problem with 2000 forward, of course, is not everybody who's going to die oh, or, good point. or um, metastasize will have, right? So it's going to be a lower number. So there's approximately, so, so that's 9%. Right. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, well, and, and that makes and there are um, there. I mean, this is very simple statistics, right? Um, you, using um, survival curves and other things, there are ways to predict um, what it, you know, but what it would look like in 20 years. But, but that's a pretty I mean, just thinking this part through. So 10 yeah. percent, if I'm reading this right, are yeah. already dead of breast cancer if they yes. were diagnosed in 20. And, oh, by the way, we didn't include those diagnosed de novo metastatic. Correct. So that's, so actually, can... that's actually a pretty chilling um, right. This I, would, and, yeah. and, and I want to acknowledge the fact that there are people from other cancers here, and they're yeah. looking at yeah. those numbers going, shit, we wish we had that. But, <laughs> and I acknowledge that. I'm just, yes. yeah. wow. Well, and, and a, yeah, and the reason I left de novo out because the the question I was trying to answer is what percent of early stagers eventually uh, yeah. metastasize, and uh, of course I can flip that. I can I can just do um, stage four, and uh, that's fifty two percent of those who were de novo from the year two thousand forward are already deceased. So. Uh, uh, all yeah, right. That's, that's interesting. Um, yeah. So uh, let me, I'm, my, my clicking is, there we go. Oops. So I don't, when you have it by ethnicity, is it by just Hispanics or you can tell, because I saw uh, uh, when you were showing numbers, there were yep. Hispanic Mexican and that's what I, uh, when we look at the Sierra data, mostly California and I'm from Puerto yep. Rico. Yes. Now. So I have not personally um, dealt with that much. You can kind of see it on the screen. Some of the, um, some of the, I, I could uh, actually. I saw it a while ago, but, uh, but I saw it in another place that it said Mexican or. Yeah. Or, let me, um, I can do a, just a quick histogram and let's see what it says on this variable. There are other variables. So you got cumin. So I don't know. This okay. is. Hmm. Yeah. So this is more. Ethnicity, right? I guess, or we don't. Uh huh. Let's put a Rican down there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and th there's more than one of those variables. So, if, for instance, if I were wanting to do something related to that, I, I might probably combine them and sort of make my own variable so that I understood it, okay. <laughs> if you will. Um, mm -hmm. What was the question someone asked? I said, let me try it. Oh, um, by. Oh, Segmenting by cancer subtype. Yeah, let me check real quick. I can't because remember. I, I looked and I, I wasn't able to find all the cancer subtypes in the yes. series. Yes, I, I think that I may have to build the subtype. I don't think there's one variable that's like, you know, triple negative, HR positive, um, so I probably can't do that. Um, so you got PR status, ER status, um, 
I, I'd probably have to build that one. Yeah, I actually, I, I was actually even going into ductal versus lobular because that's a key. Yes. Um, subtype that's that, often, I just was curious whether SEER even. I, I'm pretty sure we a, could, we could do that. I just, since I've not played with that, I'm not going to, I'd be kind of wasting everybody's time trying to do it live. Um, I do have, uh, let's see. So here's by stage. Um, so th this is the kind of information that we're all pretty used to. Uh, you know, stage zero and one are up here in the, this is what, 36, that's at 30 years, you know, at the 95%. De, de novo metastatics at 10% at 30 years. That's even a little higher than I thought. Um, stage three is at about 50% at at 30 years. Um, so that that's another um, kind of way to look at it. Um, so any anyone uh, got some questions that either just in general or an analysis, quick analysis I might try or. Um, Rod, that's I, been great. It's been great so far, Alan. I'm really I'm, I'm enjoying this. I just have a quick question, Alan. Yeah. So if I'm looking at your survival plot right now, yeah, mm -hmm. it looks like, I, and maybe it's a coloration issue, but it looks like stage one just totally drops off at 144. Uh, yeah, I it it didn't when I was practicing. <laughs> oh. So okay. I, I'm. Uh, let me just see if that's a uh, yeah. Um, I don't know why that is. There's no reason that it should, um, unless, yeah, I don't know. The, the first time I did it, um, it was, kind, it was interesting because it's, uh, it, it actually, I think crossed back over stage zero at the end, but, um, uh, so I, I don't know the yeah. answer to that. So that's a, again, if you're, if you're going to like publish data, um, from SEER, you know, that's the kind of question I'd have to dig into and figure out, you know, I couldn't just throw that graph out there and say, I, you know, I got it. Um, the, um, well, thank you. Thank yeah. you for this. This is, um, I, this has been great. This is a, a deeper dive into SEER than I've ever, than I've ever been able to take. So, okay. well, y'all had wonderful questions. Um, now, That's I was going to say, I'm, I'm a, pro, uh, a dean back home, and I meet with a lot of statisticians, and to understand what they're saying is very difficult, so I really applaud you. You explain everything so well that we're all here, like, oh, enjoy well, Thank you very much. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate that. I've uh, kind of made that my, my career to, to, to do that, so if I'm still doing it well, then I, I'm not senile yet, so <laughs> that'd be good. Um, and... You guys can find me on Twitter or uh, e e email me or what if you think of a question. Um, like I said, sometimes I, some question will come up on Twitter and at lunch. I'll, I'll jump in here and try and analyze it. You know, um, always with the, the the caveat that you know some weird things can happen. And um, but I, for instance, that that you know 29 percent uh, number of early stagers that. I feel pretty confident about that number. Um, and, and yes, you have to cut it off at a certain time frame. And so, you know, 30 years from today, what percent of early stagers will have metastasized? I'm hoping and guessing it will be lower, but, but I'm not sure, you know, that, that we can say it will. But. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for your, um, 